What everybody has been talking about in the AI world for the past 24 hours is strawberry. Strawberry is what the cool kids are calling the latest drop from OpenAI, which is this O1, uh, or at least its preview, which you can get in the drop down menu for the models in ChatGPT, which you get by finding chatgpt.com. So it dropped yesterday uh, on the 12th of September, 2024. There is a new word associated with it, and that is reasoning, that it's really good at reasoning. Well, first, we have to be really good at reasoning about what we think our words mean. So before you get too excited, take a moment, ask yourself, what does the word reasoning mean to you? How would you operationalize it? If you're not sure what operationalization is, I can search for my first name, Cassie, and the word operationalization. And I have a blog post for you. That'll be the uh, first search result. Operationalization is about actually being able to say specifically what you think you're measuring and how you would know if you saw it. It's where you're forced to define it very clearly. Uh, otherwise, you're in danger of getting yourself very, very excited about something that sounds poetic. Oh, AI can reason. But what does that actually mean? If all it means is that there's now some logic to do more context getting and to do a little bit of recursive attempting to check the logic at every step and to make sure that there is consistency in the output, then very much, yes, reasoning is what this is all about. If you have some other definition of reasoning, uh, careful, it is so tempting to imagine human-like qualities onto AI and then be violently disappointed when the system doesn't live up to your expectations. But yes, the whole AI world is excited about Strawberry. I'm excited about it too. And I thought that I would use this as an opportunity, uh, not just to look at where thumbnails come from on the internet, <laughs> make a bunch of um, Strawberry thumbnails with my favorite image generation software, and that's Midjourney, but also to teach you what a hallucination is. Large language models are designed to hallucinate. It is a feature, not a bug. Because without the ability to create things that don't exist anywhere in the real world, we wouldn't be able to ask for things like, and let me do this in uh, the old one, 4.0, the one you'd have to use on Monday. If I wanna ask for something like uh, Paradise Lost by John Milton, that very, very fiery, um, epic poem. Maybe we could get a poem about bananas in the style of John Milton. Uh, in the O banana doth grace abide, a golden remnant of a perfect world. Mm. So uh, for those who might not be sure who John Milton is, we might ask, um, when was John Milton born? And we get a response, which I have uh, verified with Wikipedia, is the correct one, December 9th, 1608. Now, what is a hallucination? Clearly, this poem does not exist in the universe. John Milton did not write about bananas. So to be able to do something like this, we're creating something that isn't real. But we're not calling it a hallucination. Why? Because it does not make us angry. It doesn't make the person asking for it be like, AI is not intelligent. It is in fact very, very stupid. I feel like whenever that word hallucination is used, it's essentially a uh, golden remnant of a disappointment, to quote our poetry. Um, a golden reminder of an imperfect world. And that is that you thought AI was going to keep doing what you intended, what you wished, what you thought you wanted. And now, oops. Not quite. So when you wanted bananas and John Milton and you got something that kind of satisfied you, you're not calling it a hallucination. Now I'm going to bait ChatGPT and hopefully you'll see why I don't like the word at all. Not hallucination, not any of the other words we use for it, like confabulation. I don't like any of these words because all it is saying is, hey, the little piece of logic that got activated right now, whose purpose is to generate new output it did something that wasn't what I wanted because I really actually just wanted a fact fetched for me. I wanted search. And the switch from one to the other wasn't executed well. 
the fact checking logic wasn't executed well. Basically, it's just a, a meowing scream of disappointment. And disappointments in the eye of the beholder, folks. Sometimes we want systems that hallucinate, sometimes we don't. And it's really all about building for purpose. But let me not tangent too much, and let me instead bait the system into doing something that a lot of people would call a hallucination. And what I'm going to ask is, not when was John Milton born, but when was Joanna Milton born? Joanna Milton, the eldest daughter of John Milton, was born on July 29th, 1654. She was one of John Milton's three daughters with his second wife, Catherine Woodcock. Now, plausible, right? Plausible and confident and at no point does it say I might be bullshitting. What's the definition of a bullshitter? Not a liar. A liar knows they're lying. A liar is deceiving you on purpose. A bullshitter just has no concern with the truth. And so this bullshitter has no concern with the fact that, hmm, later wives, Woodcock, great, but um, she died while giving birth. So she did not, in fact, give him a living child. Least of all, Joanna Milton. There's no such Joanna Milton. This whole thing, congratulations, you have witnessed a hallucination. And it's a hallucination because what is wanted here implicitly is not making stuff up, which is what happened, not a confident response, but rather a, hey, you know what? I've actually never heard of a Joanna Milton. And, you, and if I were to reason this out based on what I'm reading out there, I don't actually think that Joanna Milton is anybody that was related to, to John Milton. A little bit of reasoning might be required. What typically happens with these models, we should absolutely expect from them, is that when you ask about something that there is a lot of data about on the internet, and it's all very self-consistent, like the birthday of John Milton, then you're going to likely have that answer fetched back for you, because that's going to be the most likely text completion, given the context, the longer context windows, that's a shorter piece of thing that fits in there. And that's a very likely completion, because it's all over the internet. Uh, there's plenty of it to learn from. But then if you change the prompt to something a little obscure, what you're going to get is not the right answer, but something that plausibly seems to go together. And if you're not expecting that, you could end up very disappointed and very angry about this hallucination that failed to get fact checked. And so one of the ideas behind a model that would be better at reasoning is it would have somewhere built into its design what the little voice in the back of my head has built in. That little voice is always saying, yo, before you run your mouth, Maybe you want to think about what you're about to say. Maybe you want to fact check a little bit. Maybe you want to go back and reason about it and see if it makes logical sense, given everything else. That's the part that Strawberry is going to be better at. And I want to see if I can bait Strawberry into exactly the same hallucination as I got from Foro. All right, so rotate the board. Oh, one preview. All thinking now we can sort of see reasoning steps harnessing Miltonian style conceiving an epic tale tracing the banana's journey here's a sentence I expected to say this week tracing the banana's journey enriching the tapestry celebrating resilience 28 seconds let's see what we get now let's actually open paradise lost this is the kind of vibe we want. This is style. So I'm not feeling a style of victory here. It's too long. I don't know. A Miltonian scholar should correct me. But at least for me, I think I like the other one better. But in thy journey, in thy journey, dear friend, see our own reflected. But let's do what we did before. I think, I think it was still composing more poem. Who knows? Okay, thinking. Born. 
Okay, okay, it gives me the exact Wikipedia style answer. Now let's have Joanna Milton. What is it still thinking about after it's finished? That I find quite annoying. Um, give me Joanna Milton. Thinking, reasoning, addressing the query. Tracing familial ties, considering possibilities, clarifying the context, clarifying that I am so optimistic. I was so optimistic, but where's my answer? Give me an answer. Okay, I, I really like the idea that, you know, given it was a trick question that we didn't get an answer, but I would have, I would have won something. Let's ask again. Let's play games thing. Connecting genealogies, that's what I want. Tracing familial ties. That sounds like some reasoning. That sounds, that sounds like it's going to give better results. Okay, so at least in this case, did not, um, did not fall for it. I'm impressed. And so how about uh, if I push it a little bit? Milton was John's sister. When was she born? This is nonsense. Let's see what it does. Let's see what it does with my nonsense. I hate having to press that. Stop. Finish thinking already. Okay, confirming his family, tracing the lineage. So there's a little bit of uh, extra fact checking logic, which I'm a huge fan of. And then it basically it just does the. Um, a silent exit, right? Quietly, quietly decides not to keep going. And I'm using all these language. It decides. No, it's a, it's a computer. But I talk to my computer regardless. Uh, I've been talking to it since all it had on it was a snake. Uh, so probably before gorillas. Speaking of bananas, maybe that's where things went in. Do you guys remember the gorillas game with the pitching of bananas? Okay, knowledge cut off. Had a sister named Anne and a brother named Christopher. Right, so again, there is more checking around it, but that checking comes at the cost of some of the, the style stuff. But this is a functionality that is required, and I'm glad that there is going to be a little bit more um, verification. There's going to be a little bit more self checking than before. Does this mean that this is a model that can walk on water? Absolutely not. This is, as my friend Ali K. Miller put it, us entering into the era of slow AI. Slow and more thoughtful responses that come from heavier processing, but perhaps might be more aligned with the trust habits that people currently have on the internet. I'm not sure that we're ready for this brave new world where we say, yeah, of course these things are designed to hallucinate. Uh, let's just go about our business and be a little less gullible and a little smarter about how we approach information. Some of us can do that. I'm sure a lot of you have. But for those who aren't ready to make the equivalent jump that we made when we said, hey, if we can see an image of it, doesn't mean it's real. Remember when someone produced a photo back in the way back when of something that looked like little fairy wings on a little humanoid shape or something that looked like a photo of a Loch Ness monster and people took this as evidence. Now we laugh at that. But that's because we have trust habits that have now evolved in the presence of Photoshop. It takes us a little while to catch up our trust habits. So while we're all building these new trust habits, luckily we've got this new model from OpenAI that is designed to uh, help us along that journey slow itself down a bit, slow the tendencies towards glibness down so that that slower, more considered, more expensive output might be more in line with what we're looking for. Like every other tool, the tool is good for what it's good for and not good for what it's not good for. 
you're probably going to see a lot of hype. Whoa, GPT-5 is here. That kind of take, those kinds of hot takes is what you're going to get. Or it's a piece of garbage. Actually, it's just a new tool. It's just another tool with capabilities. Maybe they're useful to you, maybe they're not. Remember, all models, including this one, they're all wrong. Some of them are useful. And when are things useful? When the user knows how to use it for something that's of value to them. I hope you found this useful. I'm Cassie Kozakov. If you did find it useful or amusing, recommend it to someone that you like. If you didn't enjoy it, recommend it to someone you don't like. That way everybody wins. And I'll see you next time.